come back, everybody. Uh, maybe the ones outside can also join us inside, so we can have our last panel for today and for the forum. <laughs> Wonderful. I just asked Anael, are we tired? And he said, no, I'm not tired. It was such an exciting day. So that's encouraging because it's getting later in the day. But we have a very interesting panel ahead. My name is Kirsten Kramper. I'm heading the Africa department here at the Heinrich Böll Foundation. And I have the pleasure and great honor to guide you uh, through the debate of the last panel. So I think you can read this in the back, and you've seen in the program, the topic is remembering for the present and the future new ethics in the relationship between Tanzania and Germany. Things are beginning to move in relations between Tanzania and Germany. Since President Steinmeier's visit to Songea at the end of 2023, opportunities have opened up for a new phase in coming to terms with entangled history on state levels. Katja Keul, who is with us today, welcome Katja, Minister of State, has recently visited Moshi and the Kilimanjaro region to ask for forgiveness at a memorial service for murdered resistance fighters. Both governments are working on finding a formal framework for restitution and remembrance work. With this panel, we want to discuss whether or not a new era, as Emma Schultz, our president, said in her opening this morning, has begun, and speak about the difficulties in taking the next steps. But also, as this forum is mainly a dialogue of civil societies, we would shed some light on the possible impact of the inclusion of civil society experiences and perspectives into the intergovernmental work. Let me very briefly introduce my four distinguished panelists. I do this very short because in your materials you can read their bios and, and more information. Katja Koy to my left, welcome Katja, is Minister of State for Africa and Foreign Culture Policy Politics at the German Federal Foreign Office here in Berlin. Welcome. To our left. To our left is not the Tanzanian ambassador, His Excellency Hassan Idi Mwamweta, uh, ambassador of the Republic of Tanzania. As the ones who had studied the earlier program, he was announced for this panel. Unfortunately, the ambassador um, has other commitments today and cannot join us. Um, we would have loved to hear from a Tanzanian state representative on this panel, but we convinced uh, Vicenza Schuler instead to come in and join us also for this discussion. She is by now a frequent panelist for the ones who've stayed with us all day. Um, she has been introduced in earlier panels. Welcome, Vicenza. And Thanks for stepping in. Uh, don't worry, I will not ask you for any official state um, reference or, or statement. Uh, to my very right here is Dr. Professor Dr. Andreas Mehler from the Arnold Bergstresser Institute, University of Freiburg. Welcome, Andreas, coming all the way from Freiburg. And last but not least, our friend Anael Gerard Moshimeli, who is the descendant of Mangameli, and I'm sure you will talk about that later. So Katja Coyle, obviously we start with the, <laughs> uh, with the state negotiations, etc. cetera, uh, since we want to discuss, is this a new era, why now? Somebody asked earlier today in the discussions, why is it happening now? What is the current state of affairs, opportunities and challenges from your perspective of the negotiations between the two governments with regards to coming to terms with German colonial rule? And if I can add a little bit longer, since the Tanzanian foreign minister's tweet after President Steinmeier's visit, there has been reported talk about a joint working group, bilateral commission, whatever the name is. And we would also like to hear from you about that. What's the status of affairs, Katja? 
all, thank you so much for organizing this. And it is quite um, emotional to see the friends that I met in Washi and uh, in Songea. Uh, where is Songea? There. <laughs> Uh, to, to, us, to see you again here in Berlin, that's, that's quite emotional. Uh, and I'm really glad that uh, the Heinrich Böll Stiftung organized this week so we can all keep, with our, keep up our exchange. You asked me if it's, the, if it's a new era and how did this era start. Well, it's always difficult to say how it started. Um, I can say how it started from my perspective, perspective but... Um, I would say, even from from my late point of view, it's not Steinmeier was not the first one going to Songea. The first one was John and Barno coming to Berlin. That's how it started, and this is how Steinmeier got to travel to Songea. But of course, before John came to Berlin, there were others preparing all this, and um, so there's uh, the beginning is always before we realize when we jump in. But um, Another thing that the first time that I was um, learning about the fact that there is human remains from Tanzania in Germany was an article in 2017 about John Mboro. Um, Where is Mboro? He's here too. Um, yeah. So there was an article of him searching for, uh, for Mangimeli. And um, so when I started in my position in December 21, uh, I found, well, I'm responsible for Africa, I'm responsible for cultural exchange, and there is the colonial past, and I started um, looking into this, and I remembered um, about the story of Mangimili, so a lot of things came together, and I guess every one of you and us will have this uh, uh, the starting point, um, thinking about it, some for three generations, and others maybe only for a couple of years. And uh, so, well, where are we now? I mean, the, we we have, uh, uh, it was two really uh, intensive years, I would say, with the visits, um, with the Steinmeier visit. I had the chance, I was lucky to be able, to, I was with him when he was in Songea. And then um, my own trip to, to Moshi. And at, on both trips, I had the possibility to talk to the foreign minister when I was traveling with Steinmeier, he was just new in the position, and we we uh, sat side by side during the the meal, so that was our first exchange. And uh, so he was open and interested in saying, "Well, what is this about? What are you doing there, you Germans? Uh, why are you dealing with human remains?" So this was how we first came to talk to each other, and um, and then the the second time coming back from Moshi. Uh, I, I was in Dar es Salaam, and we met again to talk about how we're going to proceed from government to government. And uh, of course, it's always sensitive um, because the Tanzanian government, well, the ambassador is not here today, but they made clear that they are the sovereign representative of the Tanzania people and that they feel um, like we shouldn't, we shouldn't, uh, start negotiating as Germans with Tanzanian families. And uh, they have a point. I mean, they are the uh, sovereign uh, government. I am a government representative. And that's why I said, well, I, I explained that I felt the need to, to, to say we are sorry to the descendants and the victims first. But that doesn't mean that we want to work around the government or anything. We just felt that we wanted, or I felt like I wanted to to render the apology that, that people had been waiting for for so long. And so we agreed that from there on, we'll try to, to figure out from government to government how to handle uh, the question of restitution. And he said that they, um, the government has um, uh, created a commission on a ministerial level, but also on an expert level, and that they will come to Germany to talk to us and they expect us to be prepared and to have a commission ourselves. I mean, it's not easy in Germany to, to know who you want to talk to if you have the, all the lands and the museums. And so it's clear we must prepare ourselves as well. So that's where we are now and we're waiting to, um, to learn from the Tanzanian government how that commission is going to look like so that our 
Commission will be fitting into this dialogue. So that is where we are right now. So I understand it's about the Tanzanian government now to appoint the members of the Commission? It sounded like they already made a choice. I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure. I'm just we just don't have a list yet. Mm -hmm. So we are we are waiting because if we appoint experts and then you need to know you need historians, you need uh, archaeologists or so that's what we are kind of waiting for to be sure. But I I communicated that we are always ready when they come um, uh, to talk and find out how we do it. And then speaking about what the German federal government is can do in the meantime, um, is there other things that you're preparing for? Such as, I think you mentioned to me earlier, the museums to get prepared, provenience, research, etc. I mean, is this helping in the process to get prepared with furthering research and identifying what has been taken from Tanzania? Well, a lot of museums have already been working on their provenience research for quite a while, especially the, the big collections in, in Berlin and I also know from Göttingen. And there are other smaller ones that might not have been doing this yet, but there is funding for the research. The, the museums can apply for the funding because it's expensive to do this research, but it's possible to receive the money for it. And what I did last year was uh, in June, I invited all the museums uh, to the foreign office, all the museums that we knew that they had human remains from Tanzania. So we made a round table and, and talked to each other to find out so who has how much and from where and who is doing research and who has not done any research yet. So just to try to motivate and to, 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 to motivate the museums uh, to do these kind of researches. Let's bring in uh, Vicencio. From, <laughs> from your civil society point of view, what is happening right now in Tanzania? We heard from the state minister sort of, you know, the two years what happened, visits here, there, officially. And maybe you can also speak to, also personally, sort of, what would you expect as a civil society member from your own government? Hello, and now it's working. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, when it comes to restitution and reparations in Tanzania, we, I would say our, uh, the civil society engagement is less compared to other areas like health, agriculture, uh, women, feminism, human rights, democracy, etc. And I think it's because we have not been able to link between reparation, restitution, and human rights. So that should have been what we should have done. And I see that as a gap which we have to address. And because if we have civil society engagement in restitution movement and re reparation movement, it is clear that will also enable our government to start understanding things in depth and in context, because what I'm seeing uh, after listening to uh, key players, including the descendants uh, and the victim, other victims of the German colonial uh, domination in Tanganyika, current Tanzania, is the disconnection be between the agenda and those who are supposed to push the agenda. And I feel like it's difficult also for the descendants to continue to push this agenda because they have been doing it for so long. And it's a bit tiring because it's emotional, it is depressing. So this is an area we need to add energy because we have research and we have our museums, our state, state university museum is state owned. So their role is now a bit limited on to push that agenda and to uh, add more pressure. As I usually say, we need to add more pressure for the government also to take this, uh, this issue of human remains seriously. 
So, uh, and I believe apart from that, there's an awareness gap between the many key players and the issue of uh, uh, restitution is taken as issue of family issue or a certain group of people. It's not taken as widely as a national agenda. And this is what is missing. And we, if we, we, we continue to allow this movement to be uh, done in silos, we will not achieve what we have been trying to achieve for years. So we'll get back to the 60s where this movement started and we get one head back of Chief Mkwawa and then things ended there. So we'll go back to that cycle. So we need to strategically now start as the citizens of the country with our government to take action on this matter. And we always uh, take, not taking seriously the role of the diaspora. But I believe when it comes to issue of restitution and re uh, reparation, the role of di diaspora is crucial because they are sitting in a position of enabling us as the citizens of the country to see things from a different perspective, to learn, to, um, to have solidarity because this is a matter of solidarity and a matter of putting the issue of restitution as a human right agenda. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So if I understand you right, in a way you're saying something, and I take your own words of yesterday, I think you, you said something like, we need to build a critical mass yet, right? Yes. Um, um, I was talking about experiences we had in building feminist movement in the country, whereby we, we experienced backlashes as well, because these are the issues we will experience backlashes from all frontiers. So without building a critical mass, which is knowledgeable, aware, it's very difficult to put that pressure for the government to act, because it's not an issue which the government or the ruling party at the moment feels like it will get votes. If if they, we can make them feel that they are going to lose votes for not forming this task force in time, for not facilitating the return of the Tanzanians back home, then we are not going to achieve this issue because it's now a political issue. Thank you. Thanks a lot. There's, there's always the problematic of how can one wait until the critical mass is there and how, how long can the sentence, et cetera, wait. Katja Koy, when you, when you listen to Vicencia, I mean, you mentioned earlier and in our previous panel, I heard Carola Lenz talk about also how, many, how much activism it needed in Germany to get things moving, the memory and certainly multidirectional uh, memory working. And we are now in the midst of debating the RAM concept. We won't go into this. But when you listen to what Vigencia is saying about Tanzania, what now, today, what role for civil society in Germany? Well, <clears throat> I would say the first thing we, we need is knowledge. People just don't know about it in Germany. And since I've learned about it, I talk about it, and the reaction is quite enormous. I mean, I've been just little speeches in little villages in my constituency, and I start speaking about human remains from Tanzania. People are shocked. They didn't know anything. They say, oh my god, I, I went, I have spent my holiday in Tanzania. I didn't know. So that's, I think, the most important thing that, that we owe to those ancestors that are still here, that their story is told. So that's the first thing I would say that we should do on, on the German side. And um, I agree with everything that uh, was said. Um, well, I'm, I'm gonna not, I'm, as a representative of a German government, I won't interfere with Tanzanian political affairs, but they just I just learned something while we were talking that really gives me a lot of hope because it was, I think it was uh, Valen Silai who told me that after our visit, the government was quite critical about our visit, Steinmeier's visit and also mine visit, and that, that 
after we left the, the regional um, government that they, that they said they liked it, that they felt better with it afterwards, and that they're thinking of making this Mangi Meli Remembrance Day an official, um, an official state remembrance. And, and that would be the first step to, to relieve the communities and the families from carrying it all by themselves when the government says, okay, well, we've, we've seen there is a need for something and we'll step in and we'll, we'll take it as, as a government, as a country. I think that would be such a great, uh, great news. So um, there is hope already that things are kind of getting a little bit dynamic. Thank you, Katja. And I just recall while you were speaking, I recall that when we first talked about the forum, you told us, why don't you talk about school book developments? And we actually took this into our program, made it one of the spotlights. So you are interested also in the, in the German sort of civil society moving on these matters. It's not entirely civil society, but it's always a mix on school books. Talking about knowledge um, and somebody who produces a lot of knowledge and shares knowledge, I want to ask Andreas, we're talking restitution. Um, what kind of action from your perspective, is really needed for German restitution governments in colonial contexts such as Tanzania, because you've been dealing with this quite a lot. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for that question. I mean, governance actually is already different from government, and I mean, that could be a sort of strength also uh, of the German situation compared to, for instance, um, France, where you have mostly that government-to-government -government relations when it comes to restitution. And we talked about this also in earlier panels, and, and Carola Lenz very strongly put that forward. We heard now civil society engagement. Yeah, I mean, I'm still wondering whether uh, there is... Uh, a combination necessary between a, a more short-term um, governance action and a more long-term sustainable way of going about it. And uh, I'm, I'm getting a bit nervous, I have to say, when, when uh, hearing sounds like, ah, we have to build up critical mass, things like that. That sounds a bit as if we are waiting, oh, we're waiting for the Tanzanians to come with their commission, etc. I mean, I'm not sure whether time is on our side fully. And I think we need to build the ship while sailing. That's the sort of, of image potential or metaphor that might be necessary because I guess there could be also uh, a sort of backlash uh, in the German situation, obviously uh, anxiously looking forward to next elections, etc. So a window can also close. And we need, I think, to move forward and actually make it happen, make first yeah, restitutions that could trigger and form a certain dynamic. On the on the long term, um, I mean, making that restitution governance sustainable. I would say there are a couple of very general principles of what sustainability is all about in that field. I might translate into the following. I mean, there's an element of grounding. Uh, I would say, meaning that we need. Um, some sort of consent both from above and from below, from the elites, from people who are interested in this at the same time. You can't just forget one side of it. You have to have it acceptable for both ends. And that's not only for Germany, obviously, it's also true for Tanzania, right? I mean, most of the things are valid for on both ends. Secondly, and I think we heard about that as well, we should learn from historical experience and also of, from failure. I mean, uh, if we have witnessed that, there was also a stop after a while, or we had a first instance and then we forgot about it. Obviously, there is something wrong with the process. We should find out what the obstacles were for continuation and whether these obstacles are still here. I can't be more explicit because I don't know so much about such obstacles. But, I mean, learning from experience is very important for sustainability. Third, probably we should also look at things in a more bird's eye view. We are not alone in this world. There's some global interconnectedness. Um, sh should look also for the international sphere, UNESCO, etc. Find also alliance partners uh, on that level. Might be also important to keep a momentum and to make yeah, restitution governance sustainable. 
Then talking about sustainability, I will not be long uh, anymore. Um, you have to talk about replicability, reproduction, also in the material sense. I mean, this, this means mostly we have to be also cost effective, not eternally reinventing the wheel, but institutionalizing processes. I'm, I'm not saying that restitution should not cost money, but it should be cost effective what we are doing. And that is certainly uh, uh, rather a hint towards institutionalization of all of it. And finally, multiscolarity, I think that is very important. In the German case, we mentioned that, uh, and, and uh, uh, Katja Kohl just mentioned it as well, we have our three-tiered government here. We have a federal level, we have the level of the counties, the lender, and we have the level of the municipalities. And I would say it would be very important that the federal level, I mean, enables the other levels to also do their thing. Uh, and not way too long for uh, a framework, legal document or whatever that would regulate everything and would stop initiatives that are, I mean, at our hands, I would say, because between museums, between yeah, uh, some researchers as well, we have already established lots of interlinkages mm -hmm. on a lower level. And that should be rather enabled to continue. We don't have to centralize everything. Uh, so the, the federal level should be an enabler and not a barrier to restitution. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm sure, Katja, that you want to quickly respond to the latter. You, you, the audience have, has by now noticed that Andres is a political scientist. Thanks for bringing in this um, additional aspect, I think, of, of sustainability in a very interesting sense. I, I want to go back to your picture. The, the ship is already sailing. We, we still have to build it. Um, it's sailing with maybe one sail in the front, uh, something, a gear in the back. What, what is now the next priority? Hmm. I mean, probably uh, building the motor for having it quicker and not just by sails. Wonderful, wonderful short answer. Thank you, Andreas. Would you like to um, just respond quickly to this federal level, the central, the museums? What can they do? What does the state need to do? And what can already be done by the museums? <clears throat> this won't be very controversial because I agree, absolutely. We, we can be an enabler. That's, that's how I understand the federal government here. Uh, we are not the one restituting, but we, are enab we can enable uh, restitution by, by bringing partners together the, on the communal level, on the museum's level, experts. We have, together with the land lender, we have a, a focal point, a contact point, uh, a little institution already created um, where people looking for ancestors can come to. Um, there's funds prepared for the research. So... That's exactly how I see it. And as you said, we, we don't have a, a legislation on restitution. And I was often asked by activists, are you going to make a legislation? And I was thinking about it for a while. And now I do think it would be helpful. Yes, it's a good idea. I think there's a couple of things that could be legally clarified. But I wouldn't wait for it because there's no law for forbidding for, I mean, that against restitution, so museums can move ahead. And in other cases, it already happens, so we can be optimistic. We have other cases in Australia or New Zealand mm. where we are not even yeah. needed as federal government, where museums to museums can, do yeah. regular, on a regular basis, do restitution of human remains, and it works perfect. I mean, uh, I think this is important, what you are saying, but I think it should be also quite clearly uh, proclaimed, more or less, because you find people who are now saying, but now we have to wait for uh, legislation. At, I mean, I, I think it, it should be very clear to everybody's mind that you're not prohibited to continue. Exactly. Thank you to make this very clear, um, because th this is very much what we're hearing from our Tanzanian friends, and you've been staying in this conversation We say, yes, we always hear we have to wait for something, but things need to move. Something we learned in Parliament yesterday, talking about resources, financing of restitution, is that there is now a budget line, and that's also an achievement, 
We have to see how it's regulated, etc. We will, as civil society, observe that co closely. Let's hope that the cuts in an overall budget will not uh, be strong on, on this new budget line, but there is money now for people like John when he came first to Berlin, which, as you said, triggered the visit of our president back. Um, people need, Agnes and, and Sisi needed to, to look for funding and, and uh, make it possible because there's none. Now, this might change in the future. But I want to quickly, not quickly, patiently and uh, seriously turn to Anael. Um, as I said, Anael is a descendant of uh, Mangimeli, and I would like you to, to speak as a descendant um, of an ancestor murdered by the colonial power, the Germans, what you expect from Germany, from either the government or the Germans, the citizens, activists, what is it that you want first? Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, as a descendant, first of all, um, uh, I'm also speaking as a descendant, representing also some of the descendants who are not here. Uh, I will be selfish if I didn't say that uh, as a descendant also we appreciate what has been done so far with the Germans, because we have uh, been doing this with the other Germans uh, for quite a long time now. Uh, and also the federal government of the Germans have been showing some cooperation that uh, show us a light that um, we are going we are going somewhere. And, and I, let me ask you in particular, how do you think that repatriation of ancestral remains should be planned for and implemented? Do you have concrete ideas how this could best work? I didn't finish the first question. I'm sorry. I, I then interrupted rudely into your answer. I, I, I was just saying that I was about to think, but uh, I think I had to appreciate what has been done so far with the, with the people of the German and the, and the, and the federal government. Uh, example, we have been doing some, some of, the, of the issues, trying to do this issue about uh, repatriation and uh, reparation with the other Germans in the back of our government, in the back of the German government. And that is uh, the thing that uh, I can see in uh, many percent has brought, it, has brought us, all of us here today. Uh, and also the, the German government responded to it in, uh, in a very positive way. Uh, especially like uh, the minister have been in Tanzania more than once, right? So uh, uh, three times. So you can see that uh, at least they are responding in a very positive way. Maybe there are some misunderstandings somewhere, but at least we can see we can see the light. Okay. Regarding of what the spender descendant expect from the Germans. As uh, most of the descendant requirement and what they want have been sent to the German government and some activists in German by emails, by letters. Some we have met with, uh, with, uh, with the minister once. Um, so we are, we, are, we are expecting after some of our demands have been, have been delivered to the German government and the other citizens. But apart from that, there are things that they do expect. Uh, the federal president of the German have visited Tanzania once, and also the minister. They all made an apology to the public, saying that they are sorry for what the, the German government in, done during the colonial time. So the families, most of them, and all of them, they expect something like this. They expect an apology to be done in a family level. What do I mean when I say like this? We have many tribes in Tanzania, so apology is quite different to every family on how it's supposed to be done when you murder someone. 
And uh, I didn't say that, uh, Minister, you have to go to every family, each family, trying to say sorry, sorry, sorry. There are middlemen or organizations that have been working with us. You can just send them to, to Tanzania, to the certain family. They can go and listen to them and say that, what are your condition in making an apology? So they can say, according to our traditional, to make an apology, you have to do this and this and this. And they are not that big things. Because uh, I think you have made an apology, but when I meet mostly of the descendant, the descendant themselves, they, and they are not OK. Because um, even in some of the people who were at the Marajeso exhibition, exhibition there uh, the day before, so because Mr. Kiwell is here, is also one of the, of the descendant, he said that uh, the apology has made, but we, as a family, we have our condition that we have to be, we have to give the concept of uh, of the apology after this and this and this is done. And they are very simple thing. I know as uh, that thing it doesn't even require for you to concert the general, the Tanzanian government. You can just send the middlemen who are always working with them, and some of them you know them. Just go to the Kiwelo family and ask them what you think should be done. They say that yes, do this and this and this and this, and that thing can be done, and then it's over. So they can be in a relax and at peace, waiting for other things to 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 come on. But also, regarding that, um, I don't know how to put it, but we have talking uh, of it about uh, so many times, that uh, now you have done your part, you are waiting for the Tanzanian government to respond. What I tell you about the most of the descendants, they are, they are waiting, and they thought that. Uh, they, they decided that they will put the pressure to the, to the Tanzanian government to respond. But they also think you have the more access to put the pressure to the Tanzanian government to respond to the, to the, to the descendant what they want, especially to those our sisters who have, have already been identified. Because if someone has already been identified and he, he needs to be taken to the place to be rest in peace. If you leave, if you leave that matter to be conducted as a state to state, it may take another generation. But uh, and the bodies they have already been ident identified and they are there. Just the matter of taking them home and they can be they can be they can be buried in a proper way. Uh, as lastly, point to 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 add there, as uh, you have promised before that we have been doing the research of uh, trying to identify the, the sisters who have been brought to Germany and uh, we have not yet been located. We would like to, they expect that the German government themselves will put more pressure in the research and search for the, for the sisters who, who have not been yet located and also should help us in trying to recreate the knowledge that have been lost during the colonial colonial time because um, there are books that are here in German they write things about the Chaga about the Meru about the Maasai that uh, the, I can know that uh, you know ourselves than how we know us ourselves because uh, take example on the book that we we had a project there at Kilimanjaro lastly it explained the things about chaga even the chaga themselves they don't know all of them so you can know some of our culture they are still here in the archives in the books and what and so forth and also the last thing about the knowledge you should not forget this is for the federal government and to the, all the citizens of the German. You should not feel ashamed, or the government should also not feel ashamed to teach your children um, the history of colonialism every, every single day. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Anai. Sorry I have interrupted you earlier, but I come back now to, I think what I understood is that Apology, the right gesture has to be learned and has to be found and has to be dialogued possibly further. Um, but I wanted to follow up when I interrupted you on, on, the, on the issue of repatriation. Of, you've, you've clearly said, you know, efforts, as Katja said, already underway should be intensified um, because there, there's a need for, as, as Prof also said, uh, to, to 
to make the next steps happen and not wait too long. Uh, I think at, at some point you, you spoke about your father uh, waiting before, yes. you know, waiting for so long and, and you don't want it to pass on without the, the mission completed. Um, but can you shed some light for us, for the audience on in, in your family, in your community, what is the plan if for repatriated ancestral remains? What would happen? For the repatriation, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the repatriation, the situation now has been turned uh, in, a, in a two section or in a two point. Uh, the repatriation now concerned a uh, thing that is a political level and uh, at the family levels. Uh, in a political level, I cannot say much. As, uh, for my government, they have said that they are trying to create the committee that we should be dealt with that. But also, uh, the descendant, there are things that should be planned according to the descendant. Like, uh, they should know before repatriation what are the conditions of the descendant who are going to, to, to receive their... Uh, their ancestors, like uh, who is going to carry the cost of the burial ceremony because you are going to have a burial ceremony, and how are they going to be transported from here to there? Are they going to be transported like how we transport the bags in the plane? How this thing is going to down? These things should be planned regarding to the level or to the level to the level of the families. I don't know about the issue about the government to the government, but the repatriation. That is the point that it should be done without neglecting the families. Uh, that, like how I have been. You may take the, 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 the bodies, maybe this body you are transporting with this body, maybe this body is uh, the woman and this body is a male. According to their tradition, you cannot transport those two people together. And then when you reach home and they realize that, you find that you have done nothing all of these years. So it's very good uh, when we are talking about uh, repatriation, the family level should not, should not be, should not be uh, ignored. Let me ask you a last question, thanks. Yes. Let me ask you to understand better, because it's, it's very interesting what you're illustrating, to understand better. I, I hear you and I, I, I hear you saying we are very prepared, we know what we want as family, as community behind the family. Um, and do you have a chance to tell the Tanzanian government what you expect from them in this process? Is, is there already the conversation, what is their part, what is your part? Yes, there are, there are some conversation has been done in the in the in the regional level so far, and uh, I have been have one chance to be in a, in a foreign ministry, and then we have told them what as families we do expect, and also the regional, especially in my region at Kilimanjaro, they know exactly what we do we do we do want, and what we have told them we expect uh, when the sisters come, how are we going to be treated when the their belongings come, how are they going to be treated? Yes, there are some communication, but um, they are not in such a very serious manner because in, it was not taken too official. It's like uh, you just say that, that I need an appointment to meet with someone and you tell that when I have a time, I will notify you. And you go there, you're talking like you are just making some stories. There has not been very serious step taking ahead. But uh, as I have said, we plan to go and put uh, pressure, pressure to them. As we have said that the German government can also help us in putting more pressure to the government. Thank you very much. Um, okay. I think there's a lot of respect in this room for your struggles as, as descendants, and there's many others in the room. So the respect is to all of you, of course, for, for that struggle. Um, thank you. Vicencia, back to you. Um, as was highlighted today, and I think it was you yourself in the morning who said um, Tanzania memory work seems to be an academic exercise. But you also said one of these days activists need 
to mobilize more. You've, you've elaborated on this. When, when, you, when you listen to Anayel sort of on, on this matter, um, I, what I took from you is there need to be alliance such as on the human rights aspects, right? Can you, can you give us a bit more detailed response on what you just heard on the... Um, thank you. Uh, listening to Anna L, I realize there's a lot of R when it comes to this in, this process apart from reparation and repatriation. There's an issue of repair, reunion, um, restitution itself, replacement. So it's a huge process, even though we are talking about restitution. And also I know in Germany also this word reparation is highly avoided. It's like it doesn't exist, but we talk about restitution and reparation together because for us it's important. Uh, but in the process when we are saying we are waiting for our government, uh, we are waiting for uh, whatsoever, there are issues we can continue to discuss because but the question has always been uh, we are keeping human remains. We are maintaining them. It's expensive. What is it so profitable to keep there? It's not a lost business. So that is something we need to discuss. Why is it so important for German taxpayers to be used to service their human remains? It means it's profitable to this country. So those kind of discussion, we should continue to have them. And to, to our experiences uh, when it comes to these issues, Violence is very profitable. It's the most profitable business in the world. So I'm not sure if we're discussing about these matters and engagement of the civil society, we are putting it at the table. Because if we are not unpacking the fact that for years, German is keeping somebody's heritage resources. And then when we come to discussion about the dinosaur, we are being informed it's not that profitable, it's a loss. We subsidize our museums. It's okay to say that in public, but it, when it comes to human remains, why are we subsidizing to keep them? And why are we feeling that we are misusing taxpayers' money on that exercise? I think this one is in something which the Germany have to address. Why are we keeping human remains and maintaining them using German taxpayers if it's not profitable or if we are not benefiting from them? So I think that is something we really need uh, for, for people who are coming from Tanzania are wondering when you say the government, we are waiting for the government of Tanzania, we are waiting for, why are you keeping, if it's a lost business, I think the pressure for the government to take the bodies would have been high if it is a lost business. So we need to, 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 to continue with this kind of debate. Thank you. Thanks for Chancellor. Um, yeah, you're referring to something we discussed also in the morning that there is this, the three things, apology, repatriation, reparation, very often talked about in Tanzania, not so often here. Um, but to the, to the latter aspect, this being profitable or not, Katja, do you want to reply? What, from, well, from your perspective? I'm trying of, to listen, but I'm not sure if I understand because the, well, we're not talking about the dinosaur, we're talking about human remains and I mean, there, I don't know any museum who says we, they want to keep them. They feel ashamed that they have them and they forgot about them. Some of them, they just started rediscovering that they had them somewhere in their basement when we start asking who has human remains and how many. They've been forgotten and that's what we are ashamed of, that we forgot. I remember... John, your wife was here and she asked me, how, how come the Germans, why did you forget what you, why have you forgot, why did you forget what, what you did to us? So, and that's, that's a really difficult question. How comes nobody 
felt responsible for this. And as I said, now when we talk about it in public and when I talk about it in speeches, I see people are really, I mean, shocked. So I, I, I try to listen, but I still don't see the case. I mean, there is no, they, they, 100 years ago, they thought they would profit from collecting human remains because they had some racist ideas that they wanted to prove on a scientific level or something. To us today, it sounds really weird. But there is, now they're here. And it's, it's important, those, I mean, the museums cannot get rid of them. And that's also important because these human remains, they are there and they have a message. We are here and you need to do something about us because the museums, they cannot, what, they want to get rid of it, they want to return it, but they, they don't know how and they cannot just say we, it's human, they cannot say we throw them out or we forget them or we erase them or, and it's good they can't because the human remains remind us of what happened and they make us talk about and deal with the past. So they have a strong message. And you cannot just pack them up and get rid of them. And it's good you can't. That, that's, that's what it is. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, you need to explain. I mean, I don't know how anybody would profit from it right now. Right now, it's just they are there. And they're remembering us, they're telling us, you need to do something to return us. And that's their message. Thank you, Katja. Actually, my last question as moderator, and then I would very much invite you to ask questions and maybe continue also on some of the uh, issues we raised up here. I wanted to, to pick up... Um, Christina Hashimi's note in the morning that um, she, in a way, as a commentary, suggested that the civil society engagement could possibly be of help if it is also transnational and therefore inter, uh, um, uh, multidirectional. Andreas, do you have a take on that? If I may translate that rather into the, the world of scientific cooperation, uh, if, you may. That, uh, if that would be allowed, because relational ethics, new relational ethics, etc. I think that speaks very strongly also to, uh, to the research world. And actually, I mean, the question that was just put to you, uh, or was transferred to you, Katja Koll, from uh, here, Vicenza, is, is, is actually one of those where you see also maybe an academic curiosity towards what these Germans are doing. I mean, we are quite a curious object of research, I would say. And to transfer this to, to well, to uh, now objectify us and our, well, rare practices of the past and also in current times, I find that very interesting. I, I, I like these sort of questions, actually, that are pushed, put to us. And I think that is part of of what we should do right now. I mean, we have to value much more um, uh, our African colleagues also in research. I mean, uh, Valency Layo spoke to that earlier in an earlier uh, period that has many dimensions, uh, but it would mean that we take that serious, their expertise, their research agendas, their questions. And of course, it would also mean that in the end, um, funding bodies uh, would also learn about it. I, I would claim that some steep learning curve was with me, uh, how we can value better our African colleagues. But it would also mean that access uh, to research funds would not eternally be transmitted only via us, the German gatekeepers, to, to, to money to do research. So I think that would be quite important uh, in the future. Um, I mean, there are many other uh, items that come to mind. Um, obviously, it's not needless to repeat that handing out visa is important. We heard about this. 
I mean, I will reiterate that every time I'm sitting with somebody from the Foreign Office here. Uh, we need to have that more constantly. Uh, otherwise, it's always um, the exception. Uh, it's always hard to bring our colleagues here. And uh, I think that that should stop, actually. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm now wondering whether it's a good moment or, or rather not the good moment to... The, 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 I mean, we faced yet another exception, and I totally underline your point on what, what a transnational memory work really needs is mobility and to enable... But I also want to take the opportunity to thank the Foreign Office and the Embassy in Tanzania has made visa, um, in our case, with the visiting... Uh, program here very possible so that yes there is this willingness to be helpful but it's not for the of course general uh, mobility that we all wish for and uh, there's also discussions in the sense but having said so I would I would very much like to invite you to um, ask questions make small comments maybe for the sake uh, of the ones who joined us later say who you are quickly and uh, the gentleman here. Getting a micro. Oops. Thank you, Andreas. My name is Zablo Nkiwelo, the grandson of Sindato Kiutesha, who was held 120 years back. I've come to Berlin with my two children who are here with me. We are going back in a short time to Tanzania, returning back. What am I going to tell the, my family and the people of the village? Because we have seen the skull of our grandfather yesterday, and, what, and they are expecting to see or to get the skull of the, our grandfather. What am I going to tell them when I go back to, to Tanzania? That's, that's a small thing I can ask you. Thank you very much. Is there, I, I saw hands here in the back and then further to the left, Doty, yeah. My name is Uli Son. I'm in the Martini Müller Peace Center and commemorating center. Um, I was very much moved yesterday night to see the movie. And the whole night and this morning I was continuously uh, in my mind to repeat what I have seen. So. I'm very grateful that I realize now that there are really some activities from various sides being done under the way. I was asking my, myself up till the beginning of this, of this panel, what is the real reason why those human remains are still being kept here? Who has an interest? But what is really the reason, what is the aim? And now I learn, finally, there has been a change in consciousness. Lucky enough, it was not that like 10 years, 20 years, even 40 years. I was teaching some youth when we were going with young people to Tanzania about colonialism. They were shocked. And they went to Tanzania and said, can we go there? What? How do the Tanzanian people see us as the children, the grandchildren or grand-grand-grandchildren? Uh, of those who have committed this. So um, I think this is the pressing issue now today, since some of the consciousness have been now grown. And therefore, as I said, I'm grateful. What I, point out, what I want to point out is the whole thing is also very much a spiritual aspect, a spiritual aspect in the way of how we are treating with the human remains, which are part of the body and have the right to come back to their soul, to their soil. That's what we do as a ritual when we have our Christian funerals. We put there in earth to earth. And that's where we are coming from and that's where we are going to. And I think this is a matter of respect to all other cultures. And this should be, should be kind of a motivation for your efforts in the government and other institutions to justify what the efforts and the desires 
of all those people in the villages and in the cities and the families are. They have the right to get back their, the remainings of their ancestors. Thank you for this strong statement. Yes, they have the right to get them back. Dorothy, there was, I saw first, I think, Sarah Imani, then the gentleman here, and then the person with the hat. Sorry, I can't okay. properly see you. Yeah, I think, yeah, okay, Sarah gives the microphone first to the... Thank you. Um, I'm Irvin, a Tanzanian who's living here in Berlin. Um, and I watched the film yesterday, and I had a very curious point when uh, Mr. Mbano saw the skull, or two skulls from Songhea people, but like they didn't do the DNA match. And my question was, so to all the families and the people who can look for their descendants and their linkage, it's stronger and it's easier to focus on the few people who have descendants or who have descendants who can look up for their ancestors here. But like um, those two other skulls there, they're, for, they're from Songhea too. And maybe their descendants cannot even follow up on them. And what is being done for all the other remains where there is no people actively searching, but you know the location where they're from, and what's the process behind returning those remains? Because I think there is a huge percentage of people who will not be able to track these ancestors. Thank you. Also an aspect. We, we we have two more questions, I would suggest, and then answers, Sarah. Yeah, hi. Um, from my side, it's a very concrete. Can you say who you are? Ah, okay. okay, I'm Sarah Imani, formerly uh, with the European Center for Constitution and Human Rights. Um, we worked on reparation and restitution as a matter of human rights, obviously, as a matter of law. And um, now with the German Institute, uh, German Institute for Human Rights, but here today in support of decolonized Berlin postcolonial and the families. Um, Lengthy introduction, short question. It's in regard to the German co commission you're planning. Are you planning and governance, the question of governance? Because when we talk about governance, we obviously also talk about the rule of law, transpar transparency and accountability and control. And whether you are planning to have a um, complaint mechanism or an arbitration point or what conflict resolution, these sort of things, where especially the affected communities, members of the affected communities or and family can go to, to break up and to, to really consider the participation rights of those uh, affected most. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. There's the gentleman here. Also, try to be short and then... Make it short. So two Thank questions, you. please. First question is about, is there any scientific relevance of the corpses in the cellars, I call them, um, in any way? Anthropologists, biologists, whatever. Is there any, any scientific use of them? If not, what should be the reason to keep it here? Um, second question is talking about retribution. Retribution, one thing can be, of course, even this evening, fly them all back to Tanzania. Yes, totally agree. Second thing is monetary retribu retribution. So in which form? That I, I came up about three different solutions. One solution is government to government um, negotiations and then paying money government to government. Second one is direct investment in the communities. And the third one is direct retribution to the descendants, uh, to the, the, the relatives of, of, of the dead people. So what's your position on, on the podium of this? Sorry, I was not speaking in the mic. Thank you. Um, I don't know, as moderator, I, so I start to feel a bit uncomfortable about our wording, sometimes about my own wording, but also in the questions. I mean, let's, let's try and ref, just ref, be self-reflexive on how we are naming things. For some of us in the room, this is, this is very emotional issues, and I think we have to be very respectful in our language. I'm just inviting us to reflect. I'm, I'm probably failing many of you in my own wording. So, but um, the answers to some of the questions, shall we start with the um, state answer, <laughs> Katja? Well, just in case um, that we're still misunderstanding each other, there is no reason for the human remains to stay in Germany, no reason. They need to go back. That's just the fact. So, and our friends from Moshi, Sindato, 
ask me what can I tell, I mean, you are one of the descendants where we know your ancestor has been identified. Well, in, these are the cases, the most obvious cases. He needs to return to you, and I would say as soon as possible. Yeah, let's just find out how to do it so that it's decent, it's sensible, it's not just a package, it's a human remain. So that's why we need to find out how can we do it so that it can return to Tanzania, that the Tanzanian government is okay with it going home and that it is in a way that it's decent for you. So this is what we need to find out. And I agree we shouldn't wait, we should try to do it as soon as possible and I'm really glad that you're gonna meet also the ambassador. I learned that you're gonna meet him on Friday. So I'm happy to hear that you can discuss it and I will ask him later on and then we'll see how to do it. There was this really important question because we have four cases that have been identified, but we have 15,000 human remains in Germany and lots of them will never be identified. So what we can do as government and as lender is to invest in much, as much as possible into the um, provenance research, to do what we can to identify so that we can say that we can be sure that in the end if we have those who have not identified that we can say well we didn't make it but we tried our best I think that's what we can do I know it costs a lot of money it's gonna need a lot of funding and it's not only about money it's also about experts there's not so many experts around in Germany I see some in the room but I mean there's maybe a handful so we need to build up capacities and knowledge together with our Tanzanian partners. That's very important um, because we cannot just rely on two or three experts to do this. And we have to, to talk about certain things like DNA. There's, it's an open question. I would always say, well, if a family comes and can say, well, this human remains are from our region, then they should have DNA, but how far do you go? Because there are some ethnic groups worldwide, like from New Zealand, for example, they say DNA is not okay for them. They don't want this because it's invasive. So you need to know whether the descendants or the communities are okay with DNA. We cannot just go ahead and do DNA for all 15,000 human remains we find because some communities say no. So it is sensitive. We can do as much as we can to identify and then we'll have exactly to find out what, what, what we are gonna do with those. There are some are identified like coming from a certain community. So that could be a way to return to the community. Some have identified just a certain region or just from a country and then others just from a continent. So I would say we start with those, what we can identify and just keep working on it, not waiting until everything's ready, as I said, because we're gonna to lose too much time. And then we'll have to talk to find a decent solution for those not identified. There's a lot of things I can imagine, like if we know um, how many human remains there are from Tanzania, then maybe they return in a group and have a decent place somewhere in Tanzania where they can rest. Or maybe some, we don't even know what country, then maybe in Berlin we need to think about something to remember colonial times. All this we have to think through. But the fact, as I said before, that they exist, they force us to think about this. Because what is unacceptable is that human remains sit in a box in a basement of a museum. This is not where they belong. So as long as they are there, we need to think about rehumanizing and finding a decent way how they can find their peace for all of them. Thank you very much. I'm looking at my panelists here if they want to come in. Otherwise, maybe you want to come in. We, we, we have 
maybe five more minutes, I would say this. Nancy, Larissa, some of you I know at least by name. Oh, right. There was the, the sorry, yeah. I, f I forgot. And, yeah, well, and we, also. So, we have sorry. also some, some structures. We have that contact point I mentioned between federal and land level, where the idea of this contact point is to collect data from all over Germany so that when descendants are looking for their ancestors, they know where they can call and ask if there is information. But of course, the information is still far not as much as we wanted to. So we need to build up capacity and data, but that's there, yeah. We, well, that first of all, we need to find a way, as I said, there's a lot of questions where uh, a legislative a law could be helpful for procedures and for rights to information, all this. Um, but I would just start. I mean, as as long as nobody was refused to bring back their their ancestor, then we'll we'll find out. But that could be. Uh, I mean, they can go to court in Germany. Actually, we are. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the rule of law. Um, but so far, there is no specific procedure for it. We'll just have to just work it through. So there's two more hands I saw, and a third one, uh, four. And then I would, uh, excuse me, is it Halima raising, stretching? Are, are you stretching? So, okay, five if you all keep it short, and then I would wrap up, and Anail also wants to say. Nancy. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, the time uh, to talk to us. and. There is something, I, I was refraining from speaking, but there is something that uh, triggered me and I said, if I live silently, probably I become silently always to help take you to the grave and that will not be good. And that's about uh, the return of the human remains. So the comment that has been raised here that if these human remains are no longer profitable to us, why are we keeping them? Now, we, should for, we shouldn't forget that this was actually a package. It is to elude that the minerals that were extracted, all the profitable things that were extracted, and people who were very rich before the incoming of the Germans, and were left in poverty. Here I'm speaking about a district like Liwale, who are producing and expo exporting copper before the incoming of the Germans. And because of the devastation of the Maji Maji resistance, for example, these people have been left in poverty up to today. The population, silence, is what characterizes a district like that one. So when you say that we, no longer, we are no longer interested, we are using state funds to fund space for keeping the human remains. So Tanzania, take your things and go. That does not, does, not sit, does not sit so well when it is uh, stated in that way. So to say that uh, the Tanzania, there is no need of keeping human remains, the human remains can be taken until to even, even if required tomorrow. There are also other things that need to be put into consideration. The humanity of a human is one of the things but it should not be forgotten that these were crimes. And this, in these crimes, there are payments to these crimes. There is a room for collaboration and a room for negotiation, discussion. But this should be a leveled discussion, not that which will discuss about profit, who profits and who does not profit in this circumstance. Sorry if um, I said so harsh, but that's the point I wanted to clear. Thank you very much, Nancy. It's, it's probably the, the biggest challenge yet, how to level the discussions. But I'm really proud and happy that we've started the discussion and that we talk in this open manner. So please continue this way. I will still be the gatekeeper of the time, I promise. Larissa. I try to be short. 
Uh, Larissa Förster from the German Lost Art Foundation. So we are a funding body, funding institution, and we're funding a great number of those projects that do provenance research on the ancestral remains from uh, formerly colonized countries that sit in German collections. I'd like to, my own is a comment as well, and I'd like to bring um, your comment uh, Kirsten and Valence's uh, comment from in one of the earlier panels together, it's about funding. And you mentioned that budget line that has been created so far. We don't know exactly how that is going to work. And you said that a civil society will keep an eye on that budget line. And I wanted to bring in again uh, Valence's um, remark about who can access the funding. And I think in this situation, it's now very important that indeed you, civil society, also the stakeholders from um, countries of origin, keep an eye on how this budget line will be used, for whom will it be accessible. So it, we can keep the multivocal discussion up and that it's not going to turn into a communication or conversation only within between state bodies or state institutions, for example. I think we need the broad the participation of broader society here and there, and we need this multivocality. So I think it's we're at a crucial point because this will will be decided, I think, in the in the coming months. Thank you very much, Larissa. Very important point. We've also learned earlier today how important collaborative uh, provenience research is, and also that needs funding. That also needs mobility again and visas. So yes, we will observe that. Um, there were, uh, I think, I think in this order, or, we, or you start. Um, I just also actually want I was oh, yeah okay. So we give it to you, and then the lady in the back and. Carola, and then. Okay, I also just want to say something to the question of why are the remains here? And um, this is really a question that we really, as a German, as an anthropologist, I think we really have to talk about more because the question is not so easy to answer. And this is because um, of this is kind of status quo or the normalized uh, ideas we have of collections, of um, relationships, and um, also of access to knowledge about property, about a lot of things that a nation state also, uh, a lot of concepts um, that we also kind of have to think through if we want to go into a new ethics in the relationships between Tanzania and Germany. And um, I can just say also with uh, Saplon, uh, we had been also um, visiting the ancestors and he was also saying, you see our pain and now you also should take the pain. And if it's really in your self-interest to give back the ancestors, this will happen. Nobody will um, stop you. If people from the institute say we we don't let, any longer don't want to hold these ancestors remains here, and we need a way to give it back, not the German state will not stop it. The Tanzanian state will also not stop it. But this kind of self-interest in dealing with the colonial history and also the racist research, this is something that is. From and I say it from a from German perspective, it was a very much racism and um, also white, um, you know, sense that all these uh, kinds of um, colonial continuities we have in our mind. <laughs> it's very difficult to really um, say why we want to, why we really had the collection, and why we want to give it back now. And it's, uh, we should really talk about this. So to find a way why we as institutes, as German people, have an interest in really giving it back. And then it will also uh, make the way a lot easier. And it will also allow for debates. Because the question about provenance research is not a question that only the Germans have to deal with. But this can be a collaboration thing. 
but uh, before the question is um, yeah, to, to work on our own um, histories. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Probably an issue for, for a whole other forum also. Thank you for, for raising this. Carola. Yes, I think um, my remark builds very much on what Nancy said, but also the other speakers before me. Um, talking in terms, let's just take maybe also for the closure, a broader look at politics of remembrance, of which returning human remains is one part. And what we are actually interested in, it's called here the new ethics in the relationship, is much broader than that. And I think returning human remains and the demands that are voiced are asking for a certain closure of something, to really lay it to rest. And at the same time, we should think of that closure that is still needed in order to also allow communities to close certain rituals of mourning or return to the normal rituals of mourning instead of the mourning rituals that are needed for things that are not closed. I think we should think of that as an important element and step towards opening a new chapter. So I would like to sort of connect this idea of returning human remains as a closure of a certain process that needs to be closed. Um, I mean, even in Germany, we have this ritual of laying stepping stones. In a way, laying stepping stones for uh, killed Jews and their family members is a closure to a certain thing by recognizing the wrong that has happened. And it should then open a new uh, form of relationship and interest and curiosity, etc. So I think if we think these two things together, all that uh, others have said, so, so, so to speak, fall into place. It's just sort of framing it in a bit more general way. Remembering the dead is very important. But it needs to be also a part of enhancing the relations of the living. And I think that's actually what we are interested in, in coming to new chapters of our relations. Thank you very much, Carola. There's the lady in the, in the back here who stretched her arms since long. And then Anail also wants to say something, and then I would try to close. Thank you. My name is Nema. I have two questions. The first, we have been talking about the human remains which are in the existing German museums, but according to the, the researches, some were sold. And like what, uh, one uh, uh, human remain which was found in, in the USA. So my question is, how is the, Tanzan the, German, sorry, the German government going to help for the museum in the USA, for example, to send these human remains back to Tanzania because the museum in the US is just a buyer. And Germans are the sellers. So the buyer might say, I will not incur the costs to, to export or to bring these human remains back home. This could happen. That is my first question. My second question is, um, I personally, I don't know how other people are feeling. I feel having a question mark. I'm being left with questions because I feel there is a gap between the German government and the Tanzanian government. Because I know His Excellent uh, President uh, Steinmeier was in Tanzania last year, almost end of last year. But, uh, and I think they had discussions with Her Excellency Madam Samia, but I think if their government there is trying to create a committee, maybe the German government should also follow up. Where has your committee reached? Because it has been more than half a year that the, His Excellence was there. So I think we need to push this. You know, if someone has never got pain, pain, you feel the pain when pain knocks on your door. So not everybody has been affected by this, but how do we think of those people who are affected? And when they come here with hopes and go back home with questions without answers, maybe, yeah, we should think about this. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So 
if you allow, I would say we, are, we, we, are, we will not be able to answer to all this very complex comments and questions, but I would give everybody on the panel one minute to pick on something, something that triggers you from what's been said, and, and then I would try to close. And I would you like to start? Because you told me you <coughs> have something to say. <laughs> okay, thank you. But uh, what I was uh, about to say, Dr. Nancy has already said it, but another thing I was uh, wanting to put the pressure on and to put to and to for you to consider it very important. It's about the tra transfer of education and making sure that you are teaching the issue about colonialism to your, to your schools from the primary level up to the high school. It should be included in your history. And why I have said that I have seen the effect of it. Because take example, we have a, have a friend of mine there, Mr. Conradin. He comes to Tanzania knowing nothing about the colonial history. But since he knows about the colonial history, I have seen the effect of what he decided to to do together, together with us. So if you have been teaching about the colonial history since the years of uh, 60s, 70s up to now, we could have not been sitting here today. Because uh, what I have seen, it's uh, not all the German citizens agrees of what the colonial government has done to us. Most of them are opposing and they say that it was not right and it was not okay. So if the education have been provided since that time, we could have not have been here sitting talking about this heat. We have already, it could have been finished a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so as Carola said, mem memory means acknowledgement, right? It's very important. Andreas. I want to speak briefly on that issue of closing and opening up again, plus also the issue of um, why still do we have uh, um, ancestors in, in these collections. I mean, I should first of all say, not only in museums, but also in university collections, I think that's was spared out here. And uh, one of the big fears is a bit uh, that, yeah, this is not the strength of many of our universities to build up also some sort of yeah, remembrance, uh, memory culture or so. But uh, what you can do technically, but also symbolically, uh, to build up trust is actually, and that's something that was recommended by a body that was formed mostly also by African colleagues, is to push forward in deaccessioning yeah, uh, your collections, meaning that you would not have a property anymore, so the initial collectors at least, yeah, or the, the collecting body um, of dead bodies. I mean, it's something that is fully absurd, while still you should make it clear that you would not forget about them. I mean, there should be something that is following up on this. But that would build trust, actually, to your question, that you don't any longer want to do something scientifically, profitably, I don't know what, with the bodies. So I think there is a way forward, which sounds very technical, but could be symbolically quite valuable in that process. Thank you. One idea. Vicencio. Um, thank you so much. I think if we want to sound ethically valuable when it comes to our relationship between Tanzania and Germany, there should be no if, no but, no, however, when we are discussing issues of reparation and restitution. Thank you. Um, I still try to answer the question. I mean, I, I, I wish I could promise something that you could take home. I'm probably not in the position, but um, I can tell you that we are not laying back and waiting for something. It's a continuous dialogue. Continuously, we're asking, we're talking to the Tanzanian government, we're talking to the ambassador, you'll be talking to the ambassador. There is a continuously dialogue. And we also, I went to Paris to see how they are doing it. And they have uh, ancestral remains from Tanzania. We wrote, we contacted New York to find out about them. So it's a continuous process. Nobody is just laying back and waiting because we understand the urgency, the urgency of your ancestors coming back. So, and I cannot promise more than that we'll 
I personally try to do as much as I can. But the most important thing was, I think, said about this fact of healing and looking into the future. And because, f not here today, but from others, I, I get a lot of criticism. They criticize me, why are you doing this? Why are you looking in this past where all these crimes happened and stuff? We have good relationship with Tanzania, we should leave it that way. But of course it hurts, it opens pains, but that is what needed to heal, to heal the wounds, to overcome the traumata, and that gives us a chance to open a new chapter for the future. And I like the idea, John, when you came to Berlin first time with the book, you said, oh, my book is nearly full when I sign it. And I said, well, I come to Moshi and then we open up a new book. And that's, that's the idea behind and uh, our common, it's a common, we, we, we both profit from all this because by looking back and, and healing the wounds of the past, we can have a better relation in the future. And I'm, again, I must say, I'm very grateful that I was received in Moshi with the speech and the apology and your grandfather was there and was very moved and the apology was accepted and I know it's not self-understanding, it's something special that this was possible. Um, and again, thank you and send my regards to your grandfather and um, I was really, really happy that I was able to meet him and uh, I hope that the ancestors will re return uh, as long as your generation is still there and your grandfathers to welcome them. Thank you. Thank you, Katja. Thanks to all the, thanks to all the panelists. Thanks for your valuable comments and questions. I felt that there was a lot of commitment in this room to build, to look forward and to, to actively build a new relationship. This obviously a lot of commitment on your side. And uh, I think it's good you said you're also often criticized. We. We share that. We're often criticized also for uh, doing things uh, multidirectional when we talk about memory work, multi-perspective. But as somebody said this morning, uh, it doesn't only take to listen, it takes to hear. Um, and on this I want to close not only the panel, which was very enriching, and thank you all the four of you and thank you. but to also uh, uh, humbly trying to close the forum. It was a very enriching whole day. I've, some of you gave us the key words, I think, the key thoughts and ideas for our next uh, form of dialogue. We will still have to decide what, where and how and what that should be, but there's definitely a need for more. This morning, we heard from, from Bernard and Tondi that there's no way to shape the future without remembering the past. And even more significantly, I think, yesterday after the screening of the film, The Empty Grave, it was you, John, John Bano, a descendant of Sungai Ambano, who said he needs to fulfill his missions to bring back his ancestor to Sungai so that his children will not be burdened with the ongoing mourning. And that's what Carola just referred to. And also the task to bring home their grand-grandfather, grand-grand-grandfather, right? So for the future, we need to resolve these issues. I felt a lot of commitment. Let us further join forces in this work to make this happen. I hope this forum was helpful in the sense. Let us continue the dialogue, but more so, as you said, the actions and bring concrete ideas on how to make obstacles go away and get to our goals. With this, I am left to wish you a safe way home. And please join us also on the 30th of May, if you want, for a theater performance on the genocide in Namibia, performed by a NAMA group. You find flyers outside um, and visit our calendar. There's many more um, discussions, debates, artistic uh, work on multidirectional memory work because it is so needed. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being with us all day and participating so wonderfully. And thanks to all, all our guests from Tanzania especially, but also the German speakers and Katja Koy from the Foreign Office. Thank you. <laughs>